Hello everyone and welcome to the class. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America and today I've got a full class for all of you on just a bunch of little tricks for how to organize your photos. Uh, I, I've been working with folks for, for ages now it feels like and I know this is like one of most people's big things, right? Organizing your photos, it's like your New Year's resolution, right? You're going to get to it as soon as you have time and then you never ever do and you put it off. So the idea today is I'm just giving you a bunch of these really, really simple tricks. This doesn't involve any kind of third-party software. These are just little things that you can do that'll just help you start to get everything organized. And I have to confess, I'm guilty of this too. And actually in preparation of doing this class, I went through my photos and I finally did the tricks that I've been teaching people for years. And it really was not as painful as I thought it would be. Um, and it is really nice to know that I just, if I want to pull up a photo or, or memory of some sort, I know exactly where to go to get it. It takes me two seconds to get there. So the idea here is just to give you several different methods uh, that you can use to, to help you with this process. And, and please understand, everyone likes to organize their photos differently. Some people like to organize them um, you know, by year, and they're going to be really happy because it's really, really simple. Uh, and then other people like to more manually manage their their photos. They like their family to be together in one album, and they like their friends in another, and uh, all, all sorts of different stuff in others. So I'm going to give you several tricks today, and just understand that, look, not every solution may be for you, but it may be for someone else out there. So regardless, I hope you enjoy it. I encourage you to just kind of watch this whole class through before you actually get started doing it on your computer. Finally, before we begin, I just want to say very quickly, uh, for any of you out there who more prefer the personal touch, uh, if you uh, would like to work with me, I do private lessons online. It is something that I especially enjoy doing during the winter months. It's very, very convenient for me to do them then, um, so I tend to make myself a little bit more available. Um, if you would like to take a lesson with me, just go to techtalkamerica.com and just go for the uh, private lessons page, and it'll walk you through. You can book it online, easy peasy. Let's begin. Um, I think the first conversation that we have to have about organizing your photos in general is we have to talk a little bit about what devices are they going to be on. So for many of you out there, you have a Mac, of course, if you're taking this class, uh, but a lot of you may also have an iPhone or an iPad. And one of the things I always like to acknowledge, just again, in working with so many people over the years, is that a lot of people out there, when they bought their iPhone or when they bought their iPad, um, they didn't really think hey, maybe I want to have all of my photos on my device. So they bought one that was too small, right? It didn't have enough storage. If I have just described your situation, here's what I would recommend that you consider doing, okay? In the process of today's class, I'm going to be teaching you how to create uh, different albums, and I would recommend that you go through and do that. Um, the one difference that you may want to consider taking uh, in your mobile device, okay, uh, let me go here into preferences to demonstrate this. Um, so when you go into preferences and photos, you have the general tab and you have iCloud, okay? So the iCloud photo library is everything. And for a lot of my clients, basically for all of them, I tend to recommend that they do this option on their computer, okay? Yes, use iCloud photo library. And then as far as the download originals are optimized, that's on a case-by-case -case basis. If they don't have enough space, then we go with optimize. Um, basically, what optimize means is it's just going to have a, a, it's not going to be the full resolution image on the computer, but it'll have that uh, in the cloud. So you can have access to a lower resolution image, but for most people's general purposes, that is just fine. It's just if, more if you're printing that you're going to not want an optimized version. Um, but on your iPhone, okay, if you, if you can't fit the iCloud photo library, what you can do is turn that feature off and consider using this feature, okay? This is the photo stream. The photo stream is basically your last thousand shots, okay? Um, so um, basically, it's just a, an easy way to have access to those most recent photos that you have taken, which is what most people tend to care about, uh, along with maybe a few other selected options. So if you don't have room for the library, do this. Do a combination of the photo stream, and then what you're going to do is plug your iPhone into your computer, and when you do so, iTunes is going to launch, and one of the things that you can do is you can tell it to manually manage your photos. And so in that case, what you can do is just sync the albums that you're about to create 
along with the photo stream, which will be through iCloud. That way, uh, you free up a ton of space on your phone, um, and you really have access to the most important stuff that you need. So I, I hope that was clear. Let's move on, okay? I just wanted to mention that. But for today, we're going over photos on the Mac. So I, I want to first start off with just uh, showing you how to start to get organized here. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an album. And forgive me, this is not take one. So I'm going to actually redo this. Pretend you never saw that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make sure that we're not clicked on any specific photo. Because if you are clicked on a photo and then go to create an album, what it's going to do is it's going to add that photo into the album. So I'm just going to kind of click out here in you know the white space and go up here to File, now at the top left, and go to New Album. So one thing, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I've, I've been filming with drones for a few years, so I'm gonna create a new album for my drone photos. Um, so if I wanna take all my drone shots and put them into that album, because maybe that's an album that I do wanna keep on my iPhone, okay? Don't need the rest of it, just, you know, that. So what we can do is go through and find the photos. Of course, I pick, oh, well, here's a couple, okay? and we're going to now start to bring those into that album. And there's several different ways that you can do this. Uh, you can, of course, just very easily drag and drop. So I can just click on this photo here, drag it and drop it into that album. And you'll see now that album has, because there is a photo, it now kind of shows up right there. Okay. Uh, if I go back to the photos library, by the way, if you need to go back here, it says library, we're going back to photos. That's your main chunk. Okay. Um, now I can add a few more. So let's scroll up here. Okay, so we've got a few more images coming up. Now, the uh, for those of you who already know multiple selection, feel free to fast forward at this point by about a minute or so. For any of you who are not familiar with multiple selection, I'm going to go over it very briefly, okay? Sometimes when you want to do something with your computer, you want it to do it to multiple things. And in this case, we're going to tell it to move several items into this new album. So uh, if they are not in a row, like here, okay, like I'm just gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a couple of these shots here. So I'm gonna hold the command key on my keyboard and just click the ones that I want. Okay, that is one of my drones, so I'll use that one. Okay, that's my big drone in the sky. Eh, we'll include that, okay. And then you're going to, uh, you can let go at this point of the command key and you can just drag it and drop it. And you'll notice, see that little number seven that just appeared? Okay, so now I'm moving seven photos into my drone album. Now, if they are in a row, let's see if I can find a few more here. Um, drone, 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 drone. Okay, here we got a couple. All right, so uh, here we have quite a few in a row. So what I can do is I can click on the first, and now if they are all up against each other, I can hold the shift key and click on the last item. Here we go. That, oh, that right, that is my drone. That's the big one. Um, and now I can just drag all of those into that album. Okay, so pretty easy. Those of you who just came back, welcome back. So that's just a really uh, simple way to manually create an album. Uh, I want to give you another method here as well. Um, this, this trick I tend to use more um, when I'm processing photos. So uh, sometimes I shoot with my iPhone, sometimes I shoot with my DSLR. Th this is more something for, with my DSLR. So uh, when I bring the photos into photos, and yes, I do actually use this software, um, what I usually do is I go through them initially and I just pick out my favorites. Okay, and um, the easiest way that I use this is I do use the favorites tool, uh, which is basically a method of tagging the photo. You're just saying, I want to do something with this later. Okay, so you can apply this, of course, however it applies to your situation. So if I'm just kind of going through here casually, one of the things that I can do is I can just click on the photo, and this is the, the hotkey way to do it. I'm kind of a hotkey kind of guy. That sounded different than I meant it to. Um, but the other way of doing a, so a hotkey, sorry, you just tap the period key. Me and my big mouth. Anyway, uh, we're, we're now, so now here's another one, tap the period key. Uh, if you notice here, there's also a little heart icon clicking on that will do the same thing. And what this will do is when I'm done, okay, you'll notice up here at the top left, we have, uh, this is actually an album, technically, called Favorites, okay? So now what I can do is I can take all of those images, okay, and I can either do select all, which is command A, or I can just click and drag if I'm feeling lazy, and I can now just drag those all into drone, okay, very simple. 
Uh, one thing I want to um, just answer real quickly, because I know there's going to be people who have these these questions. Um, if you delete a photo out of an album, like a, let's let's see if there's one here that I can easily find. Let's let's go for that one here. Okay, that's my DJI Spark. I name all of my drones, by the way. That's Drone Crawford. Yep. Anyway, I'm weird. Uh, so if I want to, if I delete this photo out of an album, I just want to mention this real quickly. It does not delete it from the photos library. I don't think I need to actually prove that to you. Okay. If you delete it here, it doesn't delete it up here. Now, the next uh, method that I want to show you is for folks who do want to chronologically organize their photos. A couple of different ways you can actually do this. So let's go through a few of them. Uh, the first one is to do a smart album. And uh, to do this, all we're going to do is go to File, and we're going to go here to New Smart Album. And so what we can do here is we can create terms and conditions, and if the photo meets those terms and conditions, it gets tagged, okay? So let's call it 2017. We're right at the very end of 2017. And here we have uh, basically the recipe to set up the conditions, okay? Now, you would think that I would start with photo. In this case, we're actually going to do a uh, date captured, okay? And then we can either do is would be something like this. Well, hey, this would be a great option for like a birthday, right? But we're not doing that. We're going to do is in the range. And then we can just do one, one, and then 12. It's, we're not quite at 1231 as of the date of we're recording this, but it's coming soon. So you can see here that 50 photos matched those. So let's hit OK. And so now I have those photos right there. Okay. One thing I do want to mention here, because uh, this can absolutely confuse folks, understandably, if I go to delete a photo from a smart album, look what happens. Oops. First of all, it, does, it doesn't actually really want to let you. If you, I don't know if you heard my little error key. It doesn't want to. Uh, you'd actually have to secondary click on it and go to delete one photo. And you'll notice when I do, it's going to delete it from all the devices. So this is truly delete. Okay, so unlike a normal album, if you delete it from a smart album, you are actually deleting it. There is another option, though. You may have caught it there. If you secondary click on a photo that you, you know, maybe would rather not show up, you can go here to hide. Okay, and so what that's going to do, all right, we're going to hit hide photo. And up here, I want to say it's under view. Okay, we have here show hidden photo album. Dun, dun, dun. An alternative way to do this is instead of creating a smart album, what you can do is create a new folder, file, new folder, call it uh, the year, and then within that folder, you can place albums uh, of different events that took place within that year. Another great trick uh, just for helping you kind of discover and create albums um, is a lot of times the, the things that people want to uh, have kind of grouped together are things like vacations, right? So maybe you take a vacation to Europe, right? Uh, you want all of those photos together. And one really easy way to actually just grab all those photos is to use this feature, which is relatively new. Um, it's called Memories. Understand, please, this is a demo account. I don't have the same kind of volume of photos that you all would have. Um, so it's, they're going to be a little bit on the light side. It's me before I had a beard. I like it better with a beard. Um, so for example, uh, let's just go back to this one because I know I've got a bunch. Okay. So you can see this event, uh, this memory rather, are all these photos that I shot on this particular day. Um, but for many of you, it may be a vacation. It may be whatever. Okay. So what you can do is double click to go in. Um, it's usually just going to give you kind of a little preview right here. I know there's a lot more images that are actually here. So what I can do is I can go up here to the top right and click on show more. There's nine more that are hidden. And now I'm like, oh, that's right. I forgot about those. Two different things that you could theoretically do here. You could just, you know, highlight all of these images, go up here to file, and you can create a new album with the images that you've just selected, nine images and you could do something from there. That is one method, some people like that. Uh, another option that you might want to consider is if you actually scroll down here, you'll see here, oops, sorry, this is because this is not take, sorry, this is not take one. Okay, it'll say that, right? Pretend you didn't see that. Uh, it says add to favorite memories. And you'll notice uh, if we go back right now, if I hit the little arrow here at the top left, okay, 
we have this tab up here for favorite memories. So this is, again, just another way to get access to it. Uh, why would you maybe want to go with this option here? Um, it's just kind of a different layout. There's no real major reason why, you know, go with a memory versus uh, an album. It's really just about whatever works for you. I tend to prefer album just because it's, I like to have a list of them. It's just easier for me to, I don't know, I'm just a list guy. The uh, next feature I want to show you uh, as far as capturing these, um, I, I apologize, I can't fully demo this, but I, I will absolutely verbally walk you through it. Uh, it's the places feature here, and this is because this is a, a fake account. So when you go into the places feature here, you'll notice we have three different ways that we can view it, map, satellite, or grid. Um, you're going to find these little like dots, the little pins, right, that you'd see on a map uh, spread out, you know, wherever you basically are. And um, you can use those, you can kind of double click on them to see where you were, because for a lot of you, when you're shooting your photos, they're using a feature called geotagging. So it knows where the photo was taken. So therefore, your Mac, uh, or whatever, you know, can be very intelligent as far as helping you, you know, just intelligently guess, you know, well, you were, you know, Normally you live in this one city, you were visiting this other city, so you can just grab all of those photos through this method and basically do the same thing that I showed you, turn them all into an album. The next trick I would like to give you uh, is one, again, I'm going to have to verbally walk you through it. This is less about organizing your photos, and this is more of just a really easy way of getting rid of accidental photos. Um, if you go here uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see it says media types and Apologies, it's not going to say it here, all right? Um, so you will see selfies and panoramas most likely, uh, but there will be a few other categories there. One of them is screenshots. And for those of you out there with an iPhone or an iPad or um, in some cases an Apple Watch uh, even, uh, it's very easy to accidentally take a screenshot. And that's where you hit the home button and, and the sleep button uh, at, at, the same but at the same time. Uh, so you might want to consider going through there and just maybe deleting a bunch of them because I'm sure you're probably going to find that a lot of them are accidental. By the way, uh, another another category is also photo bursts. Uh, photo bursts are when you hold down the shutter on your iPhone. It's very easy to accidentally do it, uh, and it takes multiple photos. So that can be just a really easy way to uh, clean up. And instead of having a burst of photos, you can just select one. Next little trick I want to show you, this is more just kind of a, a request from a couple of my clients, um, is that when you're going through your albums here, as you get more elaborate albums than I have, um, different people like these to be organized in different ways. And I just want to acknowledge that each album has its own preferences. So, for example, in one particular type of album, you might want your photos to be organized from oldest to newest. In another, you may want the reverse. So just know that if you go into the album and go up here to view, okay, we can go uh, sort, and there we have oldest or newest. Next, I want to just go over a quick, um, really something that I think a lot of you could encounter. Uh, as you're going through and you're cleaning up your photos, and inevitably in the process of, of organizing, you're going to end up deleting, most likely. Um, and just, I like to always remind folks that when you delete a photo from photos, you don't actually delete it. It goes into kind of like a holding tank for f up to 40 days. And so if you are going through this process kind of with me right now uh, and cleaning things up, just remember that the recently deleted uh, folder is here. And if you want to just wipe everything out, you can just hit delete all up here at the top right. Just understand that's that's absolute, you know, unless you're using Time Machine to back up your stuff, which I, I kind of hope that you are, regardless of whether or not you're using the iCloud photo library. Another thing that you may encounter as you're going through and trying to get organized is some people discover that they have duplicates. And if that describes you, uh, what I would like to do is uh, recommend that you check out uh, another class that I've already recorded. I will put a link to it in the description of this video. Uh, and it's on a piece of software called Power Photos. It's not a perfect piece of software, but that's why I do a class because uh, with the class, it hopefully makes it a little bit easier to understand. Um, it's not that the software is bad, it's that um, third-party software can only do certain things to your photos. Uh, like, it can't delete them, so it has to put them in an album and then you have to delete them. So, if you want, if you have issues with duplicates, I would recommend that you check out that class. Uh, another one that I just wanted to at least um, reference uh, real briefly, because it, I think it's actually gotten better uh, since it first came out, um, is for those of you out there who want your photos to look better, 
than they maybe actually are. Uh, there's a great piece of software. It's available for Mac. It's also now available for Windows, um, and it's called Photo Lemur. Uh, if you want to check out our class on it, link in the description of the video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you'd ever like to take a private lesson with yours truly, you're more than welcome to sign up. You can book everything online now right through techtalkamerica.com. Just go to the private lessons page. This is David A. Cox, class dismissed.